Chemical Kinetics, the Second Order Integrated Rate Law. So last time we talked about the differential rate laws or three common reaction orders. We looked at the integrated rate law for the first order process. And now we're going to talk about the integrated rate law for a second order reaction. And that's right here. For the second order reaction, the rate is equal to the rate constant times the concentration of A to the second power. And that's a second order process overall. OK, so when we want to determine the reaction order with integrated rate laws generally, we're always going to collect concentration data versus time. And then to check to see if the reaction is second order, we're going to take the reciprocal of the concentration of A for each concentration at each time, and we're going to plot that versus time. If it yields a straight line, then it's second order. So using calculus to integrate the differential rate law for a second order process gives us this equation. So 1 over the concentration of A at some time t that matches this t is going to be equal to the rate constant k times time plus 1 over the initial concentration of A. So A sub naught is the initial concentration. This is the same as it was for the first order integrated rate law. A sub t is the concentration of A at some time t during the course of the reaction. And of course, k is the rate constant. Now, if a process is second order, when we plot the reciprocal of the concentration of A at various times versus time, plotting that will yield a line if the process is second order. OK, so here are a couple of second order plots. If we just plot the concentration of A versus time without taking the reciprocal, then we will get this curve. So again, not terribly useful. Looks a little bit like our exponential curve, although it's not. Now, if we take the inverse of each of those concentrations and plot them versus time, then if the process is second order, then it will yield a straight line. And the slope of this line is the rate constant k. OK, so this table looks very similar to what we looked at before for a first order process. So again, we collect concentration data for different times. And to check if the process is second order, we're going to take 1 divided by the concentration of A at each time. So 1 divided by 0 0.0400 gives us 25.000. And do that for all of the concentrations of A at all of the various times. Then we're going to plot it. We're going to take those numbers, that inverse of the concentration of A at each time, and plot it versus time. And if we get a straight line, which in this case we did, then the reaction fits second order kinetics. OK, so let's just talk about this a little bit more. So we have plotted our reciprocals of the concentration at various times. OK, and those are right here. Plotted them. And we fitted a line to it. And Excel produced this equation for us. Now, according to this equation, the rate constant k, which is the slope of this line, is equal to 0 0.803. x is time. And 1 over the initial concentration is 24.969. So it's obviously not quite a perfect fit, but that rounds to 25. So there is the reciprocal of the initial concentration. OK, and then let's take a look at the rate constant here. So the units on the rate constant for a second order process are molar inverse seconds inverse. 
So let's derive the half-life for a second-order process just like we did it for a first-order process. The concentration of A at the half-life is going to be half of the initial concentration of A. So we're going to plug that in for A sub T in the second-order integrated rate equation. Okay, and that's going to be equal to K times T plus 1 over A sub naught. And then simplifying, so 1 divided by 0.5 is 2 divided by A sub naught. And this still hasn't changed. Now we're going to subtract 1 over A sub naught from both sides. And then we will have 2 over A sub naught minus 1 over A sub naught. And that's going to be equal to the rate constant K times T half. So this is the half-life time. We've labeled it with a subscript. And when we perform that subtraction, we're going to have 1 over A sub naught. That's equal to the rate constant K times T half. Let's divide both sides by the rate constant. And now we end up with 1 over the rate constant times the initial concentration of A. And that is the half-life. Okay, so here is the equation for the half-life for a second-order process. T half is equal to 1 divided by the rate constant K times the initial concentration of A. And notice that the half-life for a second-order process does depend on the initial concentration of A. So second-order half-lives do depend on the initial concentration of A. And again, example problems will be posted separately. And next up, we're going to talk about microscopic aspects of kinetics. And that means we're going to talk about chemical reaction mechanisms. And that'll be part six.